two pieces together and now we're just going to cut out our nice little template pieces. So I'm going to take my water soluble marker, actually you're going to take it, and I have my scrap jersey right here and I've cut out all of my printed paper and I've just cut them out on regular computer paper, nothing fancy here. And you're going to go ahead and trace according to our sketch, which we've, you know, kind of mapped out a little bit, um, the flowers. All right. So with the water soluble marker, just go around the template, nothing fancy, just a, a line that's light enough for you to still see it. You don't have to really scrub into it and make it really dark. If you don't have a water soluble marker, your life isn't over, you can use any kind of marker. Um, just make sure that you are going to be able to cut out the marker. So give your template a wide berth when you're tracing around it, and so you can literally cut out the marking. She's going to be cutting on the marking because we know that this is going to wash away. And you can even do two at a time. So now that we have that traced, if we need two of these shapes, when you grab your scissors, let's grab your scissors, mm. <laughs> you can even fold this in half. And you could cut two at a time if you wanted. Oh, so I see. Yeah. Cut this one just like a square around here. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, now throw that on top of this. Yep, and let's cut, cut another, another one. one. Yeah, and then we'll we'll stack these, and so we'll get two at a time. The great thing about this jersey is that it's it's reversible, so you can cut as many as you you know can do accurately and not have to worry about the orientation of the fabric or of the template. Okay ladies, so we have your sketch right here which gives us just an idea, like a basic idea of where we want to put the templates. Um, so we can start arranging and here's the only tricky thing about this. Okay, flip this up. That's, so this green is going to be our binding. So when we finish this whole cloth quilt, we're going to roll this and that will be our binding. So you're going to see this little touch of green. Um, the reason we didn't add batting to our quilt sandwich is because we're going to do that reverse applique, mm -hmm. applique uh, which you're going to be so good at. <laughs> and so anytime we see this green, which is going to be this background color, mm -hmm. that's when we're actually going to be cutting top fabric away. We're going to be sewing and then cutting and you're going to see that green template come through. So right now this may look a little sparse, um, so let's draw in where our reverse applique is going to be. So we can kind of, you know, look at our sketch. Also if at any point we think, okay, this is looking really bare, let's add some more. We can also do that. So I brought all of our templates over. Um, I think you were saying yeah. that you wanted the sides to mirror. Yes. Right? Okay, so I think we kind of like half-heartedly made this sketch. <laughs> so we may need to add some more templates. Um, okay, so now that we, we've kind of rearranged some, uh, obviously we haven't drawn on any of our reverse applique. Let's see, which side are we looking at? Um, this side. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it looks like we have a green right about here. Still feel good about that? <laughs> Sorry, I still, still feel good about having maybe like a reverse applique green bit right oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So right now, none of these are glue based it on. They're just kind of sitting here. Whoop, okay, put it back. All right, take this. And I have my water soluble marker. And what's great about this is that if I draw my stencil down and I step back and I think, ah, I hate it, um, I can just squirt some water on it, rub it up. There you go. <laughs> Lace will just lick it. <laughs> that was good. Okay, so take. Okay, so one side is air and water soluble. One side is water soluble. Let's just do the water soluble side. Um, trace around that template. That's where you want it. So this is going to be our reverse applique template. Uh, we are going to sew around the line that she's drawing, and then after we have stitched that line, we're actually going to then come in and we're going to cut away. The, the space, the actual green template space. Um, and you know, if you're sloppy with your cutting, that's okay because again, <laughs> this is just gonna wash right out. It's just water soluble. And that's gonna be me. <laughs> you're gonna be perfect. It's gonna be awesome. 
Um, okay, so while you're working on that, maybe I'll cut out some more templates because actually our whole cloth ended up being bigger than my sketch. <laughs> the proportions on my sketch are kind of off. So I think we're going to add some more templates. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> You're nice. Perfect. <laughs> You're great at coloring. Um, so we're going to keep working here, and then we will meet back. Okay, we're back. We, we pretty much deviated completely from our sketch, right? Because yes. our sketch wasn't great. We got in here and we, we were like putting, you know, new flowers in, drawing new stuff. Okay, anywhere you see this, what are we going to do? We're going to do a reverse applique. <laughs> we're going to do a reverse applique. So basically that means we're just going to sew first and then we're going to cut instead of cutting first and then sewing because it's reverse. <laughs> okay, so now we have all of our pieces laid out. You can't see the other side, but it basically mirrors this side. We're going to take our very fancy Primo Elmer's glue stick. It's if you don't know where to find it, you can email Susie. She'll help you with that. <laughs> email me directly. Yes, yeah. please. Um, I'll send you to your closest Target or Walmart. <laughs> um, okay, so, yep. And now we're just going to be, it's almost like paper and, you know, and glue. It's like a craft project at this point. Is it almost? Yeah. Do the first one or? You just do the first one. So flip it over. Wah, wah, wah. Do a little bit of glue. How much is that's, this? That's good. It does, you don't even need a ton. And then just put it right back. And you will be shocked how well this sticks. And it's not going to gum up your needle either. I would focus on the center part of the piece rather than the edges. So even when you're sewing, you're not even going to hit that glue. First time you wash this, that glue will be completely gone. Do so you think I put it too close since we're going to fold it? <laughs> no! No, I think you're good. Okay. Because we're really just going to fold it. Oh, just a little bit? Yeah, you put it too close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Susie. You have so I just much want to order. encourage you, you know, I just want you to feel good about your project. But, okay, so show us how easy it is to peel that up and move it. Or did you just do that? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Cool. So yeah, so if at any point you step back and you don't like how it's looking, you can always just... And is work. it a problem if you don't do it right away? Like, you know, oh. it's been here for a while, do you think it will... It's not a problem, but it will be probably harder. Yeah. But it's not a problem. I mean, here's what I love about Jersey, is it's just forgiving. It's kind of like clay. I was thinking about this line in bed last night, because I had kind of fudged, and kind of messed something up in my Jersey quilt that I've been working on. And it, it, it's like, it doesn't fray, you can kind of mash it into place. And so I, I accidentally cut a huge rip in my quilt. And I was like, ooh, what do I do? You know sometimes you just want to apple Z that? It's like, oh, I wish I could just apple Z that moment. <laughs> um, but unfortunately my life is not a Mac computer. So I just mashed the two edges together and just did a little stitch. And it actually looks kind of sweet and like homey. <laughs> and awesome. <laughs> um, so you're just going to keep gluing. Oh yeah, we when we were laying out our flowers, we were kind of laying them on top of some pins, over some pins. At this point, you can move pins around. That's not a problem. You can, I would say, if you have pins all spread out, keep those same pins. Just kind of shift them so they're out of your way. Because they are still working to help base your, your two pieces together. Um, but just keep gluing. Also, you know, if you get halfway into your sewing your project and you're like, oh, I wish I could add more flowers. Oh my gosh, you can add more flowers. Add more flowers. <laughs> There's nothing that's permanent about this. Well, except for the reverse applique. Once you start cutting fabric, it's hard to get that back together. But, you know, like I said, Jersey's pretty forgiving. You probably could make it happen. So, everything is on the table. Nothing is off limits. We're going to keep gluing. Blue away. Blue away. So now we've basted our two pieces together, we've basted all of our little shapes together, and we've drawn our reverse applique shapes. You can see here that I have stitched around that shape and then I've cut it through. Now I'm going to show you how we do that. So when, when Lais and I were talking about whether or not she wanted to hide the backs of her knots, she decided she wanted to hide the knots. You can see in this example, right here that I have these tails showing so that adds you know a different texture it's a different look but we are gonna hide our knots 
So this is what it's going to look like on the back. Just pretty much what it looks like on the front. So you can't see those knots. So the knot is actually hidden in between the two layers. So you can decide what you want here. And I, it's a little bit wet because I wanted to totally erase my water soluble ink so it's a little bit wet right now. All I did is I took my squirt bottle <laughs> I took my squirt bottle and I just gave it a little bit of mist or you could take a washcloth and just get it a little bit wet and any kind of remnant of that water soluble line just disappears. I'm not a very good snapper. Disappears. <laughs> Thanks cameraman. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to do a basic quilter's knot. I have my number eight pearl cotton thread. I have my embroidery needle which we already talked about and I take the end of the thread just kind of hold it I think we're a little bit out of focus I might be jumping around there we go okay we hold it with our left hand so you kind of have this loop I want to make a double knot so I'm going to go one two and then I keep holding that with my left hand I pull it down there we go, we have that nice little double knot. You're going to have to practice this a couple times, so you won't get it the first time, but once you do get it, I promise it's going to be a lot faster and more accurate than trying to double knot every time, uh, kind of like you're tying your shoe. So this is how we're going to start with our needle and thread. I'm going to trim this tail, and then I'm going to show you how to pop that, that thread so your knot is completely hidden. So I snipped my little tail, and I have my thread. Now I'm going to sew, just like you see here, I'm going to sew about an eighth of an inch around this line. It, it can be wonky, it doesn't have to be exact. So if I want my, uh, my stitches to start right here, I'm going to go in and just snag that top layer. I'm not snagging the whole thing, just that top layer because I want to hide that knot. And I'm going to go in with the tip of my needle where I want the stitches to start. You got that lace? <laughs> Okay, look at this. But see, right now you can still see that knot. So what do I need to do? I need to pop it through. And this is going to feel really counterintuitive because you're going to be like, oh no, I'm going to rip the fabric. And Jersey, Jersey is, is a tighter weave than probably what you're typically used to. But I promise you're not going to rip the fabric. And if it makes you nervous, you think you left a hole, you can take your fingernail and just kind of scratch and it will just disappear. So now that knot is completely hidden in between my layers. You see that? Okay, you don't have to use this thimble, but I, I like my leather thimble so much. I, I sleep with it at night. I basically got married in it. This is what John gave me when I got married. I love this leather thimble. It won't last forever, depending on how much you, um, you sew. It, it, you know, it'll last maybe six months or so. But just when you're starting off, grab one stitch. So I'm going to show you. That was two stitches. So when you're starting off, go in, poke it out, just like that and pull it all the way through. I don't want you going in and then reaching under and pulling it out. I don't want you doing that because your stitches will be a lot less accurate. So as much as possible, you want it to be just like that and then pull it all the way through. And a thimble really isn't necessary because it's just two layers of jersey. I mean, it's so thin, it's like butter just going through here. And I'm going to be stitching just on a table. You can kind of uh, drape this over your lap um, you don't have to use a hoop. That's a question I get a lot. I would actually suggest with this project not using a hoop because it will actually stretch out your jersey in a, in a way you, you don't really want it to. So just drape it over a table, you know, whatever, whatever is comfortable. Um, and I'm going to keep going around this little circle. So I've gone all the way around and now I'm going to pop the end of my knot. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So I didn't leave myself very much thread. I suggest leaving yourself a bit more thread than that so you have more wiggle room. So I'm just going to do a knot, a regular knot. And I'm going to pull it about a quarter of an inch away from the, the edge right here. I'm going to give myself actually a double knot. Oh, look at that. See, I didn't give myself very much thread, so that'll happen, but that's okay because then I can just Rethread my needle. I actually use the same piece of thread to sew all of my little dots. So that's why it's gotten so short. 
There we go. And you can probably get away with a single knot. I just like to double knot it so I know it's very secure. So now that double knot is really nice and tight. Okay, so I'm gonna go in right here with the tip of my needle, because that's where I want my stitch to be. But then I'm gonna pop it back out. I'm only grabbing, you see that? I'm only grabbing that top layer. I'm gonna pop it back out a ways away. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna pop it. It's gonna feel kind of dangerous and scary and this jersey is gonna to wanna to stretch, but I can just use my fingernail. There we go, and I'm gonna clip this. Careful not to clip the jersey itself. And then if you kind of rub that, look, it's just totally disappeared. Now let's flip it over. Let's flip it over, can you see that? Is that still in focus? Mm-hmm. You can see that? Very cool, very fun. Okay, now it's for the ready for the reverse applique part. Am I still in focus? Yep. Um, okay, so now I do this. I kind of pinch it and shimmy it, and I make sure I only have this top layer because I do not want to cut through both layers. I just want to cut through the top layer. So I'm going to cut myself a little bit of an X right here. You see that? I've just made a little hole only in that top layer. Can't stress that enough. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut away my reverse applique. How fun is that? And this is where you really start to see that pop in the back. And I am using smaller scissors because that's going to help me get this tighter angle than if I were using my big scissors. So beautiful. So beautiful. So you can see just a little bit of that water soluble marker. Look at this. I'm just going to spray it. It completely disappears. So now you can't see it at all. Okay, so now we've done our reverse applique. I'm gonna show you the stitch for the regular applique. It's the same kind of deal. You're just going through three layers of fabric instead of one or two. Okay, so I'm going to go in a little further away. So I'm gonna pop out right about here. I'm gonna hide that knot once again. So what do I do now? Now Once. you hide the knot, like you pull it. <laughs> yep, you pull it, you pop yeah. it. Okay, so and I kind of... It will feel kind of rough and uh, all, but go. you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay if you need someone to hold your hand, you're a little bit stressed out. And now you're just going to go around and do your stitches. If you can only do one stitch at a time, that's perfectly all right. Lais, you want to get That's in here? That's going to be me. <laughs> you want to do a couple time. stitches? You do. I know you do. Walk around that table. Alrighty. This is the. This is your moment. Get in there. You want the thimble? Oh, uh, you want to try it? Wait, try it without the thimble first. I don't even know what that is for. <laughs> you obviously weren't listening. Uh, oh. <laughs> No, the thimble is just to protect your, did your you finger pads. Oh. oh, did I not explain? This is did why you? it's good for you to have. Uh, I would like to wear this leather thimble because it protects your thimble, your finger pads. Mm. That's mostly if you're doing traditional quilting and you have that rocking motion. Yeah, if but this was your finger. <laughs> right? That's what it would be looking like. Okay. okay. Now go for it. Oh, man. Yeah. Is it, this, is it far enough? Yeah, I'll a little start bit straight. closer. Get a little bit closer to your last stitch. Oh. There it is. Go in. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> grab all, all the layers. Do you feel the tip oh. of your needle brushing against the table? That's the feel okay. you want to have. Sorry guys, know. you can see I really have never done anything. Perfect, either. that's it, that's it, perfect. Did you feel that it had brushed against the back of the table? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I, it's a little I, bit so I, I'm not kidding. Here's the great thing about Jersey. Here, my hand is hold uh, this side, oh. yep. My hand is sweaty. It was, I can't pull it. That's another reason why the thimble is good. Can oh. Throw this thimble on your middle finger. Middle? Yep. Other way. <laughs> this? Yep. Now, now pull it through. 
<laughs> See? Oh wait, did that not help? <laughs> oh, there we go. We got it. Okay, let's check. That's a good looking stitch. Let's flip it over uh, and let's I, check. Did I hope it, it went through. Booyah! You got it. Woo okay, I promise I'm gonna do it. You're gonna. You're job. awesome. Keep going, girl. All right. Keep going. Um. So was it too far? Nope. I no. thought it was perfect. And this is a very personalized thing, the look of your stitches. And look, I have to understand that I get pretty nervous. When you're on camera? When I'm on camera. <laughs> look, I, I promise I can you. be better than this. You're perfect. It just... Wow. Okay. Why did you <laughs> it? Oh my goodness. You know what? I've sewn a million stitches. So if you aren't as good as me, I think that's okay. I have hand quotes. Well, I don't think. I'm pretty sure I'm not, but... So you just keep on going around, and then you're going to end your applique. <laughs> Why can't I do that? You'll get there, girl. Guys, don't be scared. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. It's just, um, um, and you know I'm what? Well I'm, I'm having you at a weird angle because of the camera. Mm -hmm. So Lace is going to keep going around, and then we'll pop back in when it's time to finish finish and pop our knots for that last time. Look at those pretty stitches. You're so good, <laughs> you're so good. Okay, so now we're gonna end it. I, I gave myself more space, so that's good. So I'm gonna do my quick, just like that. Just gonna make, like you're tying your shoe. Just gonna do a regular, regular knot. See, like that. And I'm gonna do it one more time, because I wanna double. I want a double knot so I can sleep at night knowing this quilt's now, not going to fall ask apart. You yeah, ask away. If I am really struggle to do that double knot yeah. in the beginning, you know yeah. that you thought uh, in the beginning, is it okay to do a double knot like that? Just oh, oh, of course. You okay. don't have to do the quilter's knot to get your knot started. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to pop this knot just like I did before. So I'm going to go in right here because that's where I want my stitch to end. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna just grab that top layer. See that? Just that top layer, not the bottom layer too, because I want to make sure it's it's hidden. Not sandwich. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna pop it. And I'm gonna. Okay, you have to make that noise too. And again, don't worry, guys. <laughs> You just have to make that grunting noise. And it, every time I get a little bit stressed, like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, and then it works out. <laughs> and this jersey is just gonna really stretch with you. When you quilt and you pop those knots in regular quilter's cotton, it it won't stretch like you're seeing here. Okay, let's, let's see how we did on the other side. Oh, look at that. I think we did a great job. Yay! Yay! All right. Now let's just do it on all of the other flowers.